Even men at the top of their game find themselves wanting more from life, whether it's more meaning, unshakable confidence, a bigger impact, more money, deeper love, a hotter sex life, or a powerful legacy. Find out how good your life can be on this episode of Man Alive. Also, did you know there's a skill many men never learn that ends up seriously limiting your professional success and satisfaction in your love and sex life? I put together a free guide to explain this unknown skill and give you exactly what you need to use it today. Get it by heading over to shanajamescoaching.com or text the word ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144. That's 44144. You'll also get access to Man Alive outtakes, raw footage, and bonus videos you can only get there. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Man Alive. I'm here today with Jamie Wheel. Welcome, Jamie. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So excited to have you here. For those of you who don't know Jamie, I will give a quick intro. And I actually didn't realize that we were going to be having a conversation um, that we're going to be having. Jamie... <laughs> Let me back up. Jamie is a master of flow states and, you know, has written books and researched and I'll give you his background. But I was thinking, oh, we're going to come in. We're going to talk about, you know, flow states for success and happiness, which which is part of what we're going to talk about. But uh, Jamie informed me that what he really wants to talk about today is Gorilla Tantra and the sexual yoga of becoming. So I am thrilled to dive into this topic and, um, yeah, I don't know where this is going to go, but that's more exciting to me. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So Jamie has um, co-authored the global bestseller, Stealing Fire, which he just informed me was nominated for a Pulitzer. So congratulations for that. Thank you. And he's the executive director at Flow Genome Project, is an expert on peak performance and leadership, and specializes in the neuroscience and application of flow states. Jamie has advised everyone from the U.S. Naval War College and Special Operations Command to the athletes of Red Bull, the owners of the NFL, NBA, MLB, Premier League teams, to the executives of Google, Deloitte, Cisco, Young Presidents Organization. So, you know, you've, you've had your hands, your mind, your heart, your wisdom, right, like in with the best of the best. Sure. Yeah. It's been, it's been, uh, it's been a, fascinating fascinating survey of yeah. just the top performance in a bunch of different domains yes. and just getting to see that you know at, when people are in the top i don't know what you'd say maybe five percent mm -hmm. they are interested in performance gains of one to three percent like that's yeah. material to them so right. the degree of kind of scrutiny that they're all placing on what's next for themselves as individual leaders or what's next for as a team or an organization. Yes. It's pretty fine grained and it's, it's, there are always fun conversations to have. Yeah. Right. And, you know, as we were starting, you said like, let's, okay, I'm in for this as long as we're having a new conversation. So I just want to guide you to, is it the flow genome project website? Mm -hmm. So, you know, anything you want to know about flow and flow states and all the research Jamie's done, oh. go there. And we're going to take it from there and go into this topic of Gorilla Tantra and sexual yoga of becoming. And I mean, why don't we start actually with, um, give me and us a little bit of a sense of what, what you're actually talking about. I've never actually heard of Gorilla Tantra. So No, no, it's a, it's a TM patent pending. Um, so uh, the, the idea here, I mean, just, just to walk it all back, it, this is actually completely congruent with the work of the Flow Genome Project and you know, performance hacking, et cetera, et cetera. It's just that most people tend to think of human sexuality in terms of eroticism or mm -hmm. romance or both, some kind of combination of those two things, meaning the romance and you know, do I love you? Do I have feelings for you? And mm -hmm. I might project a whole bunch of other stuff on top of you as well, but yep. fundamentally me and you. Uh, and then the eroticism, whether that's just kind of physical carnal drive, the kind of lust elements, or whether that's aesthetics, et cetera, et cetera. So some form of the actual just kind of magnetism or attraction. And then as a result, it gets fully enculturated. So there's all kinds of meaning making and significance we assign to sexuality and, you know, that, that really doesn't have anything to do with the physiological functioning of it. Yes. Um, so, so if you, if we walk it all back and you're like, wow, you know, this is just, this is the evolutionary imperative. It's that powerful. 
Um, it, Sex it, as the evolutionary imperative. Yeah, straight up, we all got here that way. Uh, yep. As as did most of the universe. Mm-hmm. You know? and, and you know, you go into Hindu mythology or, or or a lot of Native American mythologies, and you know, cosmology began. Surprise, surprise, with a big old fuck. You know, as as did. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. You know, so so. Um, so the first thought is just to say, well, um, two things. One, it, one is to realize that it's a wildly potent force, yes. very hard to control. Therefore, it makes total sense that pretty much every society for time immemorial has sought to corral it, okay. control it, contain it, direct it, um, and did so with taboos, sanctionings, endorsements, et cetera. So just, to, just you know, yeah. we don't have time to like... Un- right, we don't have time to go there, but it is really interesting to even just pause with that thought of like, wow, it is so powerful. Yeah, super crazy powerful. And as a result, there's an awful lot of additional cultural and psychological baggage dumped on top of it. Mm-hmm. Now that, that, gives us, that gives us two things. One, one is, is also um, what's possible because it's, because it's the evolutionary imperative, like good old mother nature through the kitchen sink at us to ensure we keep doing it yes right and so that's where you get into the flow and the performance hacking side which is there's this you know potent cascade of neurochemistry of reinforcers of pleasure and learning and you know and 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 habit forming um neurochemicals that mm-hmm. show up in those states ranging from dopamine and endorphins to oxytocin and serotonin to mm-hmm. you know all of these things and once you realize that you're like oh wow that's the mother load of neurochemical priming Like that is literally the strongest thing we are ever incented to do outside of eating. Wow. And, and and therefore if you can get under the hood of it and you can learn to tinker with it, right. You have very powerful state of consciousness hacks. Yes. Arguably the most potent you can ever get your mitts on. Um, And state of consciousness hacks you're saying through sex or during sex. Yeah. Like learning, like a decouple it from all the cultural baggage. Yeah. Realize that fundamentally we are neocortexes, you know, connected to spinal columns, connected to erogenous zones. Uh And you're like, Oh wow. We can learn to play and tune uh, our own instruments, the instruments of our lovers and partners Mm. with, with the intention of precipitating wild ass, super interesting states of consciousness. And uh-huh. then you point those wherever, wherever you want. That to me is super interesting. Right. And, and you know, it just strikes me just to, to pause here for a moment to say a lot of people are having a kind of sex where it's just, well, a lot of people are not having as much sex as they want. A lot of people are dissatisfied with their sex. A lot of people haven't necessarily at least you know people who have come to me and work with me and you know the people I've met out in the world well a lot of people aren't talking about sex and um you know I don't think in general there is a sense of what you're saying that sex is kind of this this doorway this um rocket fuel for different states of consciousness yeah, yeah, and you know, and I mean, I, I've been in a lifelong relationship with my partner, and so as a result, you know, in varying points in time, we kind of came across a book on tantra, like Margot Anon's, you know, mm-hmm. Art of Sexual Ecstasy, or yeah. something like that. And you, you, I read those sons of bitches, and I, and you know, I get through like the second chapter, and it would be yes. like, and here's the part where the man wraps himself in veils and comes prancing into the bedroom <laughs> and takes off his clothes as a strip tease and don't forget the incense, and it's like fuck that noise. Not gonna happen. Right. So, so, so when anything resembling, or, or even, I mean, you know, friends of mine that were like comparative religious scholars, and they'd be like, "Hey, here's some badass Tibetan Buddha, Buddhist OG tantra. Like, check out this PhD dissertation or something." Yeah. And I would, I mean, I honest to God, remember doing this over a Christmas holiday. I was like, I read that thing for like a day and a half, like Mm -hmm. just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and being like, where the hell's the goods? Where's the actual instructions? For achieving these states of consciousness. Yes, just like, give me the paint by numbers. Let's do it, right? And and I never got there. What what I realized is no sooner did you start getting into like the how-to's, then you got into these elaborate cosmologies and then you have to recite these words or these languages right. this day, or this, that, and the other. And it just became so Baroque, you know, just so complex and, yes. unique, and therefore unverifiable. And yes. You're like, really? Really? I, so on the one hand, you know, what does make sense to me about this is that, uh, let me see how to say this, right? In order to, I think, achieve certain states of consciousness, you have to be 
open to states of consciousness, right? Or so I, my sense is that maybe in all of that, you know, barrage of whether it's the, the veils or the, the dances or the, the, you know, the prayers or whatever, I just wonder if that's why that's in there. However, that doesn't make it very approachable for the, the general public. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you could absolutely say there are some super valuable, profoundly meaningful caveats, allegories, yeah. you know, checks and balances baked in for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and we never kept practicing and we were interested, you know, right. so, so like the net result, at least for a 21st century, you know, uh, a sort of Western householder was yeah. Is, kept on driving. Yes. Um, but, but nonetheless, right. If, if you, if you back it all up and you're like, okay, evolution, super strong imperative, mm -hmm. mother nature, kitchen sink and incenting this, this behavior with a ton of very positive neurophysiological responses. Yep. Right. Um, including everything from attraction to arousal to orgasm and release, et cetera. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And then you also even think, um, how did we get to be clever monkeys? Like what, you know, like Yuval Harari, who wrote that book, Sapiens and mm -hmm. Homo Deus, you know, one of his questions was, how did we become human? How did we go from Homo erectus and Neanderthals and all these different, yeah. uh, like, you know, Homo, Homo species? Like there was a bunch of them. I mean, that was the mind blower. That book was like, there were seven different species all living on this planet at the same time. How did Homo sapiens become the ape who knows? Right. Right. And you could say it was because, um, you know, arguably one of the defining characteristics of humanity that's pretty darn unique in the entire animal kingdom is we have prolonged extended sex outside of estrus, outside mm -hmm. of mating time. Uh -huh. And and if you then couple that, because, you know, like Terrence McKenna had that stoned ape hypothesis. He's like, oh, well, the reason we went from dumb, dumb cave dwellers into smart apes is because we were herders and, you know, and mushrooms grow on, you know, herding uh -huh. on, on cow shit. Ergo, we ate the mushrooms. Ergo, that's why we're smart. And you're like, well, that's such a tenuous strain of logic. Yes. But the reality is, is that, you know, humans got busy and, you know, beyond bonobos, beyond I mean, chimpanzees, average copulation is six seconds. We are 90% wow. genetically identical, you know, uh, lions, animals, I mean, other animals mate and, and the actual act of sex is painful. It's dangerous. And yeah. It's free. Yeah. So wow. to, have, to have a species where it can be pleasurable, extended, mm -hmm. right? And arguably, and, and particularly when you get into the neurochemistry of it, it leaves yeah. us with feelings of safety. Yes. Right. Security, belonging, attachment. You're like, holy shit. Okay. okay. This might well wow. The thing. And, and then the ability to repeat as often as you want or I right. can imagine. Then you're like, wow, is that the neurochemical shift that kind of brought that extra 3% of our DNA? Right. So, um, okay. So are you, can we, can we go to what's possible? Does that feel like a place that we could jump yeah. to? Or, we, we, can, we can jump there if you want. We're going to be skipping a few steps. I, but, well, and then come back. Cause I think I want to, I think where I'm, going in this is like, all right, well, what even is possible so that then we know how we're getting there? Like, what have you experienced? For sure. So what is possible is a dedicated practice with a partner or partners, it, like the notion of relationship formats and structures we yeah. can leave. Is irrelevant. Well, no, I mean, it's super relevant in the sense of, do you get through the garden gate or not? And huh. so I will just put a shout out for dudes is you can't do this with more than one person until you've figured out how to do it with, with one, one person. Great. Okay. So, right. So, so we'll, so we'll let that be for now. Yep. Um, but I mean, what it can end up being is a psychedelic shamanic visionary practice where you can mend all of your trauma and gain, you know, cosmic level meditative insights, um, and access to kind of like the galactic magic eight ball. So it's through sort of, the sexual experience. Yeah. It's pretty much an unfair competitive advantage. Yeah. Um, I would say. It's super, it's super fucking fun, you know, no doubt. So, so that's absolutely what's possible. You can, and, and when, when we have basically run folks through even the basic protocols um, of this, they're like, Oh shit, this is like that time I tried five MEO DMT. Uh -huh. like, uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So, so you actually have a protocol for this at this point. <clears throat> 
Oh yeah, we have all sorts of protocols. Um, so, it, and it truly is paint by numbers. It's like the whole point is like, you don't ever have to talk about your fucking feelings again. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You can literally just learn to work it out, just work it out. And so back to- Work it out through your body, through your- Work it out through your body, work it out through your somatic system, work mm-hmm. it out through the neurochemical process. Mm-hmm. So basically it becomes like <clears throat> Lego block like Kundalini Lego blocks huh. and you can just snap them together in sequence and really just think of, again, if you, if you de-eroticize, de-romanticize and even huh. de-socialize sexuality as a set of behaviors, functions or practice. And you're just like, this is just stuff humans can do. Right. Which reminds me of your, we don't have to go there because everybody can, you know, watch your, your talks and everything, but right. But of really looking at our egos or, the, the possibility that we've been, um, you know, trying to navigate life with a driver that hasn't necessarily been able to get us where we want to go or need to go. And, and your analogy of this, this dashboard, right? Mm-hmm. That yeah. we're, you know, that- yes. Yeah, exactly. So the notion of a dashboard, you can live up on, you can kick it up on the dashboard instead of down sucked into your stories. And by the way, one of the apps you can be running is the neurosomatics of full spectrum sexuality. And you're like, okay, so now it back to that notion of like Lego blocks and you can snap things together. You're like, okay, um, if we basically see sexual arousal um, and release as just like, it's like an EMP, it's like an electromagnetic pulse to our nervous systems. So it builds up energy and then zoop, poof, right? And levels it out. And so in, in the French, you call it la petite mort, the little death. Belinda, right, right. So there's, all these, there, there's all these moments of basically nervous system d- down regulation. Uh-huh. And in a time when we're all just fibrillating, like super stressed out, our social feeds have gone ape shit, right? Yeah. The news around the world is crazy, work, traffic, you know, stimulation. We're all in a state of perpetual quasi arousal, like yeah. distress. But right, not, uh, right. Not the distress kind stress, of arousal. Right, not you stress, not positive and healthy stress that mm-hmm. makes us stronger, just distress, just fibrillating noise that is just depleting us. Yes. So what sexuality can be viewed of, at least in particularly in this day and age, is a way to both, is to increase the you stress, right, mm-hmm. the positive arousal in our system, and then whoosh, drop it out entirely. And leave us increase the use stress and yeah. then release the stress from our system and then release it cleanly. And mm-hmm. so it can pulse through our entire nervous system and leave us level set. So, so you can use it as a form of very deliberate trauma release because right. Mm-hmm. I mean, unmetabolized stress becomes post-traumatic stress. Right. Right. You know, so, so we end up with an accumulation, like if we can't deal with it in real time, yeah. you know, backlogging in our nervous systems, our psychology, our relationships, et cetera. Yeah. So just thinking of it in that way, you're like, oh, that's kind of neat. That's, that's yeah. neat. So like step one would be like sexuality as a tool, sexuality mm-hmm. as practice, not sexuality mm-hmm. as exclamation point on a great day, right. not sexuality as bargaining chip for power in a relationship, not any of the lower level ways that people use it. So like step one would be thinking of it as a bio, neurobiological tool. Step two is like committing to it as a practice. We show up and train every day together, yeah. whether, we, whether we want to whether or not. Whether we want to or not, right? I mean, which actually, how beautiful is that for couples who've been together for a long time who feel that there's this need to have to come with, you know, not come as an orgasm, but <laughs> like come toward each other, having mm. all of this arousal already. No, actually as a practice, it's, you know, come together as you are. And practice. Bow, bow under the mat. Yeah. Just bow under the goddamn mat. I do not wait to see if my pearly whites are shining back at me to decide to floss my teeth at night. Right, right. right? You do it because you're like, I'd like to keep my chumpers for another few decades, right? Mm-hmm. So, so the idea of like, and, and that alone is a huge psychological thing. And of course, when couples get in rough straits, what do they do? The first thing to go, because sex has exclamation point, there's nothing right. to exclaim. There's no yeah. celebration. So we're not yeah. doing it for that reason. And there's sex is bargaining to your poor tool. And someone, often a woman, is withholding, right, as a way to communicate. Sometimes women, sometimes men, right? We don't have to get into that necessarily, right? But it is like one person in the couple usually is using it in that way or withholding. Yeah. And yes. Absolutely. And so what you end up with is you end up with a death spiral. And then the only thing left is like couples therapy. And you're like, dear God, like now we've just cut off all new energy into the system. Yes. And we're now quibbling over the table scraps. 
yeah. you know, which is a, which is a downward spiral versus commit to the practice, mm. put gas in the tank, whether we like each other or not. Right. Which now makes sense to me, right? Where you're talking about the sexual yoga of becoming, right? That there's this yoga of sex as opposed to like you're saying sex for the exclamation point. Yeah. And, and then you basically you are like, okay, so now in the notion that it's modular and configurable, I mean, I don't, this is not like the actual experience is very organic. It's, it can be totally romantic. It can be profoundly relational. Great. Okay. So that's interesting too, right? It's not this kind of scientific, like you said, paint by number. There's, there's actual human experience there and massive and delight. Human experience. Yeah. yeah. Massive amounts of human experience and um, no, no, no need to believe anything a priori. Yes. Uh, you can just you can go try to it out. these experiments. Yeah. And, and so like, if you do that, then I'm a big fan of like, let the mystery stay the mystery. Like there's yes. no need to prejudge or prewire or, or over promise what's, what's on the other side of any given experiment. It's much more, it's much cleaner just to be like, here's, Here, try this. here's the rationale. Here's the, here's a research or a credible reason why you'd even want to try. Mm -hmm. um, here's the instructions. Go conduct this experiment. See what happens for you. Yes. If it's valuable, um, you'll keep doing it. And if it's not, the less we've spoken of it, the better. Yes. And, and, and if you come up with your own content that needs deep debriefing or integrating, awesome. Now mm -hmm. you've got your own data set. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just generally, I think, you know, it, it preserves more people's autonomy versus getting all hopped up and chasing some new blinky shiny thing. Right. Some new right. high, some new promise, some new something. Yeah. But I mean, but, but I mean, the realities are is like combining if so, so now back to that notion of Lego blocks, you're, you're like, oh, okay. So there are no skipping steps. Yeah. Right. And, and, and so in, in human unfolding, it's like, oh, my physical level of not just fitness, but openness. Right. I mean, what yeah. is my spinal mobility? What is my pelvic openness? Like if I have tight hip flexors and an inability and I sit too long and all those kinds of things and I spend all my time not moving, mm -hmm. right? I'm not going to be able to connect yes. in a meaningful way. Right. Mm -hmm. I won't have any kind of vitality move through and circulate through my system. In fact, yeah. I think I just saw Ben Greenfield's bit on that he talked with you and it was just talking about sitting, constricting blood vessels. Yep. So even on a purely mechanical level. Right, you're not going to be on top of your game yes. if you're not engaging in good full range physical movement. And fundamentally, I mean, it's particularly spines and pelvises. Yeah. Right. Okay. And okay. So I know our time is short. I know you don't have a lot of time. So what what feels most exciting to convey for you? And what's new? Right. Like, is is this new? Have we have we accomplished your goal of talking about something new or? Are you giving us the background and we haven't gotten to, to yeah, the I mean, this, this was all wind up for the actual kind of. That's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so the idea would be is that like, if, yeah, if you, if you realize um, you're like, okay, so, so you can combine yeah. sexuality practice and arousal with a host of additional beneficial projects yes. for optimizing yourself. Mm -hmm. So start with your physical movement. Right, and get multiplanar, open joint, like full range of motion going. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Then add respiratory practice. Can you actually breathe and circulate, um, you know, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen in a mm -hmm. skillful way? And anybody who's been doing Wim Hof breathing or any of those kind of things, or has tried a holotropic breathing workshop, yeah. you dip your toe into varying aspects of that. Um, relational practices. Does your partner feel known, seen, trusted, safe, right? Is there, is there real time communication as you guys potentially enter mm -hmm. different domain, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and Which that is so rare. It's so, it just pains me to say how rare it is that people actually feel known, seen, heard, understood in partnership. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I mean, even just to the, even just to the basics of just, you know, safety, like rock climbing, you're like, yeah. you know, as you're not tight and are you on belay? Yes. You're in climb. Go ahead. I've got you. Right. Are you on the same team? Right. Versus yeah. all of that. Yeah. Which, which, you know, which circles back to the notion of, Hey, like practice this um, with a single partner first, simply yes. because you don't get any place meaningful or interesting, constantly swapping um, right. down, down at the bottom of the, at the bottom of the mountain. Yeah. Uh, but once, you know, I mean, then one, once you learn, then you can be a hopeful ambassador for good things. Yeah. Um, but 
you then realize, oh, so any, and then take, um, even take sort of conscious kink, right? I mean, you realize, oh, pleasure pain can be swapped out uh, and mm-hmm. mapped to arousal cycles, which increase neurochemistry. Yes. You can combine um, varying combinations. And again, this is in the context, you know, prerequisite. Absolutely. High, These are all prerequisites. High trust container. Yes. Yes. No one is pulling fast ones on anybody else. This is yep. not, and this is not pickup artists appropriating NLP. This is not any of that. <laughs> right. It's like, right. What's the list you're going to use? Pick up artists, right? Any of those, those yeah. ways to debunk or to try to manipulate, right? This is based yeah. in deep trust and care and love. And I mean, those concepts could all be, yeah, created or, sure. or understood in different ways too. But but what I'm getting is right this foundation of, you know, a partner with whom you are uh, heading in the same direction on the same path, wanting good for each other. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And and then you realize, okay, if we are able to, I mean, fundamentally, right? I mean, most of most of tantra, east and west, has basically been, you know, delay or avoid male ejaculation for as long as possible. Interesting. While having sex for as long as possible. Uh Everything else is sort of details. You know, it's like additional different bells and whistles and cultural. Uh So you're like, okay, so try that, right? Just try, you know, and you can throw in, you know, orgasmic meditation or some other sensitizing, preparing Mm. practice. To open and be able to feel more and conduct more energy through your body and all of that. Yeah. So, so, so start there. Right. Mm-hmm. Start, start with deep attention to a woman partner. If a woman partner is in the mix, mm-hmm. um, extend and prolong, you know, nice, connected, heartfelt uh, sexual encounter mm-hmm. through the range of arousal and, and peak and climax. Mm-hmm. Consider adding in any form of intensify. So there's a whole range of like sexuality, you know, tools, not toys. I mean, everybody, if you just look into your kitchen and you see these thousands of dollars spent on the off chance, someone might actually cook a real meal in that right. room. Right. Like this is so, but you know, and so sexuality, it would make sense that we would invest in uh, at toys, least some tools, some form of quality mm-hmm. tools, um, mm-hmm. you know, good vibrations, which is in, up in your area, like a woman yeah. owned sex positive, highly educational mm-hmm. story you know, wants to kind of still steer, understandably steer well clear of kind of trench coats and yes. brown paper, wrapping paper, right? There's, there's, there's high quality, positive yeah. places to learn and, and find tools and practices. Okay. And that, you're saying we're, these are all still, we're still in the prerequisite realm. Like we haven't gotten to no, no. the gorilla. I mean, the actual, the actual source code would be like, okay, super funky ass beats, quiet, dark room, good candles, vibe it out, safe, uninterrupted space. Uh-huh. Orgasmic meditation for 15 minutes. Uh, bring the one. This is all cis het blah blah blah. Um, um, right. Well, you can do orgasmic meditation with a man or on a penis as well. So yes, either way, whatever gender, yeah. whatever sex you're having, you can do this. Yep. Um, and and then you can add in um, anything resembling um, like a neros is a prostate massager for a man. Mm-hmm. Nipple clamps connect the nipples to the clitoral nerve for the woman. Any kind of um, clugs to bring in the vagus nerve and the pelvic floor. And then you can play with uh, any kind of um, you know, basically just edging, edging mm-hmm. practices mm-hmm. to a climax. Same, close to climax, but not going over the yeah. edge. And then saying. in conjunction with breathing practices, in mm-hmm. conjunction with spinal mobility and pelvic movement practices, you can even use like props and bolsters, uh-huh. right? If you open uh-huh. up the heart and back with a, with a roller underneath your shoulder blades, whatever, right? I mean, yeah. that's what I meant about the Lego block thing. Yes, like yes. Any set of protocols that are good for you and or fun and or mm-hmm. embodied, you can pretty much combine with arousal and release. Yes. And they get that much more interesting. And yes. you can even combine this with, mm-hmm. you know, in, in places where you're allowed, um, you can add in uh, cannabis, you can add in nitrous oxide and oxygen. You can add in a combination of both respiratory state consciousness shifting as well as mm-hmm. neurochemical state shifting. And before you know it, you've got norepinephrine, dopamine, you know, oxytocin, serotonin, anandamide from the cannabinoids. You basically have just reverse engineered uh-huh. flow state or a peak ecstatic state. And then you can, particularly with breathing protocols, we do a 53.1, so 50 hyperventilations. 
Hmm. What you do is you're edging. So that blows off CO2 and reduces your desire to breathe. Uh -huh. Then three, inhalations of pure sports oxygen. Uh -huh. right? And then one, deep inhalation of nitrous oxide. Uh -huh. And time that with maximum pain because your, your pain threshold goes up. Uh -huh. Nitrous uh -huh. oxide is used by doulas. It's used by you know, midwives and all those kind of things from mothers delivering children as well as the happy dentist. Yes. Right? Um, and in conjunction again with cannabinoids, with arousal, et cetera, where allowed, um, you then do the 50, then the three sports auctions. So you've got low CO2, maximum saturation with your oxygen, and then one um, one lungful of nitrous oxide and then time that with edge play, maximum peak, pain, pleasure, and climax, and you hold your breath as long as you possibly can. While you're climaxing. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And, and um, that's kind of the ball game. Okay, um, so that's the paint by number that you just said. That, like, like, conduct that, see what happens. But no, that is, be, you know, like, like it typically shows you um, two things. It will... If you if you are clear, like if you've done the rest of your integration and work, um, and, and William James, I mean, back in the 19th century was doing this, and he's like, oh, it was amazing. You get shown <laughs> the meaning of the universe. You just don't remember it when you come back. <laughs> right? right? But, but anyway, it birthed the entire field of comparative religion. It was what inspired him to write varieties of religious experience, his seminal book on the subjects. Like, I mean, it's what got him started. Mm -hmm. um, but the realities were is, you know, part of the reason is A, he came back and didn't have the language for it. And B, he didn't have the embodiment to hold it. So now Right, which goes back to all the other building blocks like you were saying. Yeah. So in this day and age, we have it. the language and we have the ability to be much more integrated and, and embodied. And if so, you can come back with kind of quicksilver from the other realm that you've just visited. Yeah. Do you and, have personal examples of what quicksilver you've brought back? Yeah, well, I mean, pretty much the entire thing, including the self-disclosing nature of this practice itself. So it taught us what was next, which is bizarre. Um, meaning? But, meaning literally like, hey, here's how this works. Oh, here's a vital respiration workshop. Like, here's what it would look like. And here's the progression from like static apnea breath hold with a pulse oximeter to Navy SEAL box breathing to freehold diving protocols. Uh -huh. So you were shown... Breathing. To, ga to, to gas-assisted breathing, to, to gas-blended assisted breathing to the end. And, oh, by the way, that should run about 60 to 90 minutes, and you can call it the Vital Respiration Workshop. Wow. Like, oh, shit. Wow, that's fucking fascinating. That's what I mean about, like, the, the, the galactic magic eight ball. So, yeah. like, it is but, – but here's the thing. It, this is, there is an interior logic to it, and it appears and beats me why. I don't presume to, like, assert the, the meta meanings here, but it appears to be self-governing. It tends to show you both what every, the world of infinite possibility and also exactly where you're broken. Mm. And, and it feels like, and, and we loosely, like we loosely turn, you know, the, the breath hold as you travel, we've playfully called like the cosmic fuck tunnel because it just, that's what it is. I mean, until we come up with a more technical name. That's I our, like it. That's our working title. <laughs> and, and, um, and what it appears to reveal is something resembling like the bliss fuck crucifixion. So you increase the pleasure, increase the pleasure, and you can, you know, you understand all the knobs and levers. So you're like, yes. okay, this would work. This ought to, we should try this. What about, what about that combination? They all work amazingly. Yeah. And so you're like, oh, so we, we, and then that gets you to the la petite more, the little death. Uh -huh. So it is this winking out of all preference, pleasure, pain, stories, all of it. Uh -huh. And the crucifixion part is just the, oh dear God, I am here 100% alive, yes. filled with gratitude and torn open, open. Mm -hmm. torn open with the, with the heart wrenching beauty yes. of being alive. Being alive. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it feels like the game is if you go home and do your homework, if you yes. do what you've been shown, then you get to level up the next time. Yes. And, and, I, and if don't, then you enter the hell realms in a hurry. Well, and that's kind of what I was actually just going to go to. And I know we need to end soon, but you know, my, my personal question that I've been kind of wondering about lately is being a mom, running a business, all of these things, right? Like, does this last for you? Do you get to, do, do the benefits come from the bedroom into the rest of your life? Are you finding that? I mean, it is, it, is, it is a central practice. It is the wellspring of magic and meaning in our life. 
and it beautiful it, it informs everything from parenting to creative projects in the world to like bizarrely tactical stuff like oh here's a ass marketing strategy holy shit never thought of that um to yeah i mean like i said i mean it, it, in, in many respects it feels like and, and by and you know it, it can sound like utterly debauched. You're like, oh my God, I cannot believe, right? If someone is like swinging from the chandeliers in that fashion, that is, that's out of hand. And then, but then you realize it's also like incredibly squeaky clean um, and, and positively wholesome because you're like, well, there's A, there's no need to go state chasing in any less effective way. Like, why would I casually drink? Why would I habitually like be a stoner? Why would I be on pills or your psychedelics or like, why would I do anything other than save my entire week for like, mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so you become super clear and then like the no skipping steps, you're like all my body work. Suddenly I'm training my ass off. Right. You suddenly know, you're doing all of those steps and all of those building blocks to actually make this happen. All the building blocks because the more you prep, the higher you go and the more you retain. So it suddenly becomes a very, literally it's just the final capstone building block on an integral practice. So, so uh-huh. now uh-huh. there's an amazing positive reward, which is ta-da. Like most people aren't like, wow, I've just done push-ups for a whole week. And there's some incredible <laughs> neck snapping light, light experience. Right. right? But if you, if you train in this fashion and it's just the culmination of a whole stack, as I said, diet, movement, respiration, relationship, you know, financial practice, you know, getting my work done at getting my stuff done at work. Right. Like, so I'm free and clear, right? All of it. And, and then you realize, um, that in, in many respects, it just, and, and, and then even the, um, the notion of like the sexuality, because again, people can't help but be like, whoa, the only people I've heard about that's like cooked up Russian strippers in Vegas and like something really weird. You're like, yes, mm-hmm. right. No, and I love that you're bringing this actually into a possibility for the mainstream. Yeah, like, like, and the reality is, is because most people are so repressed about this stuff that they only act out out of compulsion, perversion, et cetera. So you're like, whoa, well, if that's like two or three of those things and you're talking about doing seven or eight of these things, then uh-huh. that must be super unconscious or uh-huh. super or super compulsive. And it's like, it's the exact and opposite. It's not. And, and, and then the reality is, is you can't do this casually. So it, you, so it also becomes this ridiculous backdoor into lifelong um, partnership and sacred union. So you're like, oh my God. So this notion of like midlife couples being like, hey, you know, that the thrill is gone. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's, over. it's like, yeah, of course it is. But like, holy shit, you could be beginning to practice this thing where it even ceases to be about our quote unquote sex life. Yes. It's literally how two caring humans connect their prefrontal cortexes and their spinal columns and yeah. circulate tons of energy and take turns slingshotting each other to the back of beyond, right. which is endlessly magical, mysterious, and fascinating. And by the way, gives you all the source code to then go back and you can use it. Like if you've, if you know, you've seen the MDMA PTSD studies where they're like taking yeah. a pharmaceutical safety, security, belonging, and then going back and revisiting stress mm-hmm. and releasing it that they haven't been able to do any other way. You can take this sexual protocol, does exactly the same things on the neurochemical level, and then go back and do guided revisiting and excavation yes. of trauma, of places you've hurt each other, of anything, or, or places you were hurt before you even yeah. found that p- practice partner. So, okay, I think this is amazing, fantastic, magical. Like you said, I think it can rewire our ideas of that midlife relationship or, you know, relationship going downhill. And I imagine for one listening, right? It's like, wow, that is uh, in a way like you just gave me a rocket ship and I haven't totally figured out necessarily how to put fuel in the rocket or drive it or direct it or so so let's just end with where would you start right do you have this paint by number mm-hmm. guide how do you how yeah do you i mean, I mean, I mean starts? you know it's certainly like where we're relevant is like somebody's already in a dedicated relationship and that does not mean till death do we part it just right. means we're on belay and it could be for a long weekend. It could be for a summer fling. It could be whatever, but it's committed. I'm not just going to leave you mid route. Right. right. So or even I was going to say mid route or even after, but after is probably what you're referring to mid route. Like that, you know, there's, 
there's the follow up or there's the right the impact mm -hmm. that happens after that experience in that one moment per se. Yeah, absolutely. And but I mean, like in in the deromanticizing, right? That there's this thing where like now suddenly my attraction to my partner A is neurochemical. Like you mm -hmm. can just dial it. And it can become wildly powerful. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to mean that someone we finally have resolved who who does the dishes on Tuesday nights. Right. Like it's so different than that. Um, and then and then it becomes um, literally what are the domains we get to together. So yeah. it's it ceases to become egoic. It ceases to become my are you meeting my projected needs or not, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. But as far as as far as the the beginnings, I mean, the first is obviously self bodily knowledge. So even if somebody's not in a relationship at that time, they can begin practicing and understanding their yes. arousal and their movement. And it's just kind of Taoist 101, right? Yeah. I mean, the more alive, the, I mean, this is true for men in midlife with dropping testosterone, uh, prostatic understanding, pelvic understanding and control, true yes. for women in two, both, you know, I mean, perimenopause kicks in at what, 30, 33? Like, and it's just kind of a variation from there. So, like, yeah. The Everybody's more. different, but right, but right. Yeah. I mean, I love working with men on that sense of getting to know their own bodies, their own psyches, their own arousal, their, how emotions are connected to arousal. I mean, all of that, right. Like you're saying, I mean, these are the first steps in this yeah. process. And, and, and many men, right. I mean, two things I'll leave, you know, takeaways for you guys is that after 8 PM men's testosterone drops off a cliff. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're in a longer term relationship and you're waiting until 10 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock at night and you've had a beer or two, right? All those kind of things you're saying, I'm just not feeling it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The answer, of course you're not. Right. And the other is that, you know, mid forties, men's testosterone count tends to drop, particularly if they're inactive, sedentary knowledge workers. And what is the surest fire way to boost testosterone that many men tragically do run off with a young new mate. Right. That actually does spike testosterone. And so yeah. if a guy's like, I've just lost that sense of life, I'm just phoning it in. I don't know what's different. And then, ooh, little Susie Q, my secretary, suddenly makes me feel alive. I'm willing to destroy, you know, 20 years of something yeah. really useful because I don't know how to rekindle the honeymoon phase right. with my primary. You're like, oh, that's tragic. You got there's definitely a simpler, better way. And it's not to like somehow halfway our way back to what mm -hmm. was kind of good enough to start. It's like, no, no, there's an entire additional chapter or entire another book that you can dive into. And it's pretty limitless. Okay, right. So, I mean, that is, that is revolutionary, right? To talk about that right now, what seems like the only option sometimes for a man who's getting older and has lost his testosterone or sense of attraction or whatever is to leave for the younger woman that this is actually a pathway back or even beyond like you said to where he started yeah way beyond and it completely decouples again all of the romantic egoic stuff of like i'm not feeling alive therefore it's your fault right right i'm not attracting yes right you. on right on Right. And instead yep. it becomes, wow, we are practice partners and we can intensify the polarity at a neurochemical level. So it's kind of like, I mean, evolution is amoral, right? It yep. tricks us into the sack, doesn't care with whom, yep. whether it fits our social structures, preferred relational formats, emotional, psychological, personal needs, et cetera. It just wants to just spread the gene pool. And it's yes. Yes. a number of fast ones on this, including that male midlife crisis, you know, runoff with the secretary bit. Right. Um, so we can turn it on its head and you can actually hack evolution back and you'd be like, I'm going to create the infatuation of romantic yeah. and love. I'm just I gonna love it. I understand the knobs and levers and it doesn't stop there. I can also use it to access backdoor access yeah. the highest states of whatever, you know, whatever you'd yes. want to call it, adept conscious, adept awareness. Right. Um, okay. So this seems very hopeful for me, right? Especially for a man listening who's like, ugh. You know, I'm in my marriage and I'm, I'm, I just don't feel it anymore. I don't know where my aliveness is, all of this. Mm -hmm. And then back to, right, first steps. I mean, we, we've gotten to some of the first steps mm -hmm. around body awareness, emotional awareness, arousal awareness. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and more to point, just conduct the experiment. And we do like a 21-day intro course that's called Flow for Couples. And it's just basically, mm -hmm. it's actually right. just the screener for the more in-depth stuff. Because we're like, look, if you can't, hang it together and practice for 21 days, then we yeah. sure as hell on teaching you the dynamite techniques. Yes. Uh, that just wouldn't be safe or, or responsible. But the flip side is, is like, 
just conduct the experiment. We do like Freaky Fridays, like a date night, and those those thirty six questions to fall in love. Like you know, like yep. we do, do a dozen of those. One you know, like one dozen per week for the three weeks. Mm-hmm. Have the practices do daily owning. Do you know do do those things? Don't worry whether you have found that loving feeling or not. Don't worry what your psychology is uh-huh. Uh-huh. at all. Just commit to the practice. Just commit to doing it. Just commit all to doing it. Yeah, yeah. Just, just commit to doing it and fuck your lived experience. Don't even yeah. worry about it. Yeah. And I guarantee you that at the end of the 21 days, you will be feeling fundamentally different towards yeah. each other. Yes. And, right? And about your own sense of things. And, and that is just... That's just, I mean, that's, that's the kind of easy way. Like no one has to talk about the feelings. Now, the reality is you start moving that much juice between you as a couple. There are no skipping steps. You right, will, you will to, start. You will have to about, and need to yes. go through not just your current laundry list of grievances for each yes. other, but if you're doing it right, it actually gets worse. Right. I was going to say, right, it'll bring up as you're starting to heal and release things from the past, from your body, from what you've been holding. So oh, yeah. that's a whole, I mean, we could have a whole nother conversation about that, right? And how to, how to enter into that. But it sounds like what you're saying also is that this, you can continue using this practice to keep healing. And, you know, you may need some guidance, some support, some, you know, therapy, coaching, whatever along the way to actually make your way through all of this. Yeah, we always joke. I mean, we even said this to ourselves, which was like, you know, like literally like write in big magic marker and like put it on magnets on the fridge. Like, remember, colon, we did this on purpose. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> because once you conduct the experiment, I mean, everybody's a doubting Thomas. Everyone's like, yeah, really? Is this seriously going to work? And then at some point, like three weeks later, six weeks later, you're like, oh my God, you're like coming up for air, like gobsmacked. Like where the hell did we just go? Well, I think you're painting a, a, a good picture too, right? Of You can't really, I, I think, I'm curious what you think, but you know, you can't necessarily just open it up and have all the bliss and the beauty without actually having the shadow and the darkness. But yeah. you know, then there is a way of holding it. Like you said, we did this on purpose. You know, I don't have to hold it that these places I'm going to that feel dark or that feel hopeless or any of whatever's coming up, that there's something wrong or bad there. Yeah. And, you know, I, I would say sometimes we need some help. Yeah. I mean, in the three ways this doesn't work out, right? And we can, we maybe can even end on this would be a distraction, i.e. how we start and then just some other blinky shiny thing comes across our path right. and we stop, right? Yeah. And I mean, just super simple. Nothing really happens. Right. Yeah. Uh, addiction. Uh, we start out cynical that anything could rekindle the thing, and that's actually not the issue at all. Yeah. The issue is what the hell do you do when you can when when you've just lost your mind? Yes. All you can think of because once you've hacked this, you're like, oh my god, there is nothing more fun. We are staying inside. We are canceling all of our appointments, and yes. I'm, playing, I'm playing hooky from school, uh-huh. right? Um, and then the final one is revulsion. Mm. which is this has now brought something up in between us, in me, in you, that I cannot stand to look at. Uh-huh. And, I, and I pull the ripcord on the practice. Yeah. And so as long as you continue to lean into the pain, yeah. and as long as you continue to bow on to the mat, meaning we keep practicing no matter what, yeah. then you have safety. If, if, you, if you bail on the practice in the midst of the gnarly gnarly, yeah. You're in, then you're in the wastelands. It's a tr- that's that's not one I'd recommend. Yeah, yeah. And as you say all of that, I just think, wow. Okay, this in some ways seems so far beyond where some people are. Right, where some people are, you know, disrespecting each other, shaming, blaming, all of that stuff that happens in couples where, um, you know, there isn't a practice of consciousness, or some might call it spiritual growth, some might call it relational growth. So, right. I mean, if that's not already a foundation in your relationship, as you said, if those building blocks are not in place, I could see this blowing things up in a very explosive, not necessarily in the good way, way. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is absolutely dynamite. And that's the funny thing in this day and age of like info marketing and, and spiritual marketplace, everything is supposed to be the amazing game changing blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And the reality is, is that, I mean, this, you can, you can, with high degree of confidence say, this is the real deal, not because of anybody's patent pending something or other, but just because you're like, oh, like leveraging the yeah. entire evolutionary impulse to get it on. Yeah. Um, doing that with 21st century neuropsych, yeah, that probably works. Yeah. And, 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 it, and it absolutely does. And so all your cautions, like the no skipping steps, yeah. right? Don't do stupid shit, right. right? Don't become an addict. Don't become a pervert. Mm-hmm. Don't manipulate or abuse the mm-hmm. power. 
All right. Don't, 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 right. don't use don't, the don't, power for good. Don't, yeah, use the, use the power for good. Don't succumb to magical thinking. Yeah. Right. Don't stare too long at the sun. Mm-hmm. Right. All these things. Don't neglect your relational commitments. Don't, mm-hmm. re- don't right. neglect your other commitments, your children, your work, your yeah. everything. Right. Yeah. Like don't do stupid shit. Yeah. And, and we all know what that stuff is. Yeah. Um, Which I love the way you're saying it. It's like, right. You know, be an adult. Don't be, a be, child in this way. Be an adult. I mean, the idea of like Suzuki Roshi, you know, he said, he said, you'll find no reasonable men on the tops of great mountains. Mm. Right? So like when you're up there above, like above the cloud line and into the death zone where people aren't supposed to be, like you mind your ropes and you check your anchors and you yeah. like, you realize we're in some, and like to say the, the sunrise from the top of Everest is the most stunning thing ever is true yeah. and it can kill you. Yeah. So right? both both are both are in the mix, and I would imagine Woo. that men listening to your podcast wouldn't actually want less than that. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Maybe we can. Maybe I can get you on here again after I go through the twenty-one days. We'll see if my <laughs> I can work that out to go through the twenty-one days, and then then we can do another one of these and actually, you know, debrief from the other side. That would be amazing. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Where can people find the 21 days? Is it on the Flow Genome Project? Is there a specific website? Yeah, I think it's just literally under, it's on flowgenomeproject.com. And if you just go to the train tab in the upper right, uh, it should pull down a list of classes you can, you can take online and great. in person with us. Awesome. Sweet. Thank you so much for being here today. It's great to see you again. And uh, yeah, till next time. For sure. Be well. You too. I'm so glad you joined us for today's episode of Man Alive. I hope it gives you a sense of what's possible and how good your life can be. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful for you to subscribe to Man Alive and write a quick review that helps men like you find us. And again, head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash manalive to get outtakes, videos, and raw footage I only share there. These are some of the most interesting parts of these expert conversations. You can also grab your copy of The Unknown Power to accelerate your career and solidify your confidence with women because the two are related and I know you don't have to settle for one or the other. Join us each week for a new episode of Man Alive.